Hello everyone and welcome. We're here in Yeshivat Chut Shel Chesed under the guidance of Rabbi Shalom Arash and we continue to learn, to study, to listen to the stories of Rabbi Nachman of Breslov. We're holding in the third story titled The Cripple. This is part two. We just started the story. Anyone could jump right in whenever you're ready. And in this story, I'll give you a small recap. This boy... His father passed away and he gave him a mission. He had a mission statement was that he should water trees. What that means, we'll find out soon. But it seems like a very interesting uh, will that the father leaves over for him. And his father passed away and he was a cripple. So the issue was that he could not get around. He couldn't make a living. So his brothers would help, would help him out. One day he decided to himself, hey... I saved some money from my brothers. I didn't. I didn't uh, splurge with all the money. Uh, I have some money saved up. I want to go and be a businessman myself. I want to make my own uh, my own money. So he went on his way, and he hired a person to help him. And unfortunately, they got hit by robbers on the way, and they stole everything from him. And he's there alone. They say, "Hey, what are you what are you doing here alone?" said, uh, I can't walk. And they just left and they left him. So he was there and he, he ate, sustaining himself from the uh, different greenery that, that was surrounding him in the forest until he happened upon a beautiful type of looking uh, vegetation. And he said, hey, I like this. And he pulled it out from its roots and under it he found a diamond. So we're pretty much holding here in this part. So... Under the root there was a diamond. The diamond was square and each side had a different power. You see, we'll see that he will use these powers to be able to help and heal himself. On one side it was written that if you grabbed it, you will be able to go to the place where the sun and the moon meet. And it turns out that the, the side that the cripple picked up was that side. He was facing that side and it brought him right to that place where day and night meet. He looked around. And he saw that the sun and the moon were coming together. And all of a sudden he heard a conversation between the sun and the moon. The sun was complaining to the moon. He said, there is a tree that has many branches with fruit and leaves. Every single branch, fruit and leaf, has its own special power. One is the power to grant children. Whether a person doesn't have children or to have more children. Well, another has the special power to grant livelihood. Can give us money. One has the power to heal this sickness. The other ones have the power to heal different sickness. So each and every part of this tree had a different power. Now, he's continued to talk. The, the, the sun is talking to the moon. He said the tree must be watered. Because in order to continue these powers... It needs to be watered. But not only do I not water the tree, the sun says, but when I shine on it all day, I am drying it up. The moon said, you're worried about this? Let me tell you my problems. It says that I have a thousand mountains, and around these thousand mountains, there are another thousand mountains. This is a place of demons, of evil. The demons have like chicken feet. Therefore, they don't have any strength in the feet. So how do they get strength to move around? They pull nutrients from my feet. This is what the moon is saying. And because of this, I don't have any strength in my own feet. Now, I did find a remedy after all this time. I found something. I have a certain dust, a certain powder, which is a remedy for my feet. But a wind comes and blows it away. The sun says back to the moon. He says, that's your worry. I'll tell you a cure. Where can you go? There's a highway with many roads branching off from it. One is the path of the righteous. When a person is righteous, wherever he walks, there's dust in front of him from this path. There's a path of the atheists, people that don't believe. And wherever he walks, even if not on that path, he is also taking steps on this dust. There's also the path of the insane, the people that are crazy. If a person is insane, then this dust from this path is sprinkled under him wherever he walks. 
And there is also a path for the righteous person who accepts suffering upon themselves. This is a very high level. What type of suffering? The wealthy landowners lead them in chains and they do not have any strength in their feet. Some powder from this path is scattered under their feet and gives their feet strength. You must therefore go there. There is plenty of powder, plenty of this dust, and it will be a remedy for your feet. This is what the sun is telling the moon. We could see now why the cripple had to go through all this. He had to go through this whole thing of getting robbed and being there and finding this gem because ultimately this will heal his feet. He is similar and he is compared to the moon in this story. And if the moon is able to heal himself, then the cripple will be able to heal himself with this dust. Another thing that we see here is that he would have never understood his real mission. Why his father said that he should water trees. It sounds like a very, very uh, weird uh, last will and testament from his father. But now, he, because he got robbed and he was stuck and he stayed stubborn, and even though he might have made a mistake, but he stayed there in the forest and he started to continue to have a desire to live. Even though there's nothing going on and you're not having a good time, and there's just nothingness around you. You're stuck in a forest all alone. You feel all alone in your life. Continue trying to live. Continue to try to find things that will keep you alive. And you just might find that diamond, that magical diamond that you were looking for. But stay true to who you are and what you're supposed to be doing. So, The cripple heard after hearing all this, he looked at the other side of the diamond and he saw that it was written there that if someone grasps that side, they will be transported to the highway which many paths come from. He said, hey, this is the, the highway that they were talking about, so I'm going to go there. He placed his feet on the path containing the powder that was a remedy for the feet and he was immediately healed. He was able to get that special healing that he needed. He then took powder from all the paths. Still, his mission was not finished because he still has to help the sun and the moon. He then took powder from all the paths, trying, uh, tying into bundles. He made a, a bundle of the powder from the path of the righteous, of the ones of the uh, insane. And he decided to go back to the forest. He came there and he chose a tall tree near the path along with the robbers went out. He took some powder of the righteous and some powder of the insane and he mixed them together. He climbed back up to his tree and he said, hey, let's see what's going to happen here. So, all of a sudden he sees a group of robbers been sent out by their leader to go and try to get some, do the, what they do. They came to the path and as soon as they stepped out on this dust, on this powder, they became righteous. They started to cry, say, hey, we, how did we do such lowly acts? How did we fall to such low levels to rob people and we killed so many people but because the cripple who was not the cripple anymore he mixed it up with the the insane so they started to fight with one another and they say hey you know why the, we fell to this low level and this low state is because of you not because of me and he said no it's not because of me it's because of you and they started getting all fighting and crazy until they killed each other now the leader set out another group and they also, this happened to them, until all the robbers were killed. The cripple, who was not a cripple anymore, realized that none of the robbers from his team remained, except for the leader and one other man. So he said, it's time for me to go down from the tree. He went down, and he swept away the powder, the dust, that was this blend, and he only put the powder of the righteous, and he went back to sit in the tree. Now the head robber was curious. He said, I sent out all my men, and now no one's coming in. No one's bringing me back any goods. So as soon as he happened upon the path, with the powder, with the dust of the righteous, he started to cry for his soul. He said, I killed so many people. I robbed so much property. I even, I tore out graves. And he started to really, truly repent. When the ex-cripple was sitting in the tree, he heard that he was really, really feeling bad for himself and where he put himself in his situation. He says, give me a way to repent. 
so the cripple gets goes in front of him and he says, Give me back the chest that you stole from him. Now the robbers kept a record of everything that they have stolen, including the day and the victim. He said, I'll return you everything. I'll even give you all the wealth that I amassed over the years. Just tell me how I can repent. So now the cripple told him, You know what? The only way that you could repent is to go to the city and confess. Say, I am one who made the announcements way back and I said, whoever wants to join me for food and tell them your whole story, how you became a chief robber and that will be your repentance. So the chief robber gave him all his treasures and went with him to the city doing as he said. Since the robber had killed so many people, the people of the city sentenced him to be hanged as an example. Stop here, but we'll end off with one small interesting idea is here the the cripple, he lost all his wealth. Sometimes we fall. And we lose all our, our spirituality. We might lose our merits. But there will come a time where the evil side will have to spit out all the holiness that it swallowed. Because at the end of the day, the Yetzirah is just doing its job. He's doing his job to test us. It's sort of like a king that sends someone to go and test his son to see if his son is going to be loyal, to see if his son is going to be strong. If he's going to hold up to temptation. But the Satan himself also has to have a rectification. Not only us are trying to rectify our souls. But when the Yetzirah, so to speak, gets slaughtered, the Baal Shem Tov teaches us that that slaughtering of the Yetzirah will make him into a good angel. Sort of, so to speak, that when you, when you go and you have an animal and you make it kosher by slaughtering, sort of something like that. So, but... Never give up on all that goodness that you have. Say, hey, I did so much goodness, then I fell, then I was good, and then I fell. All that good can come back and will come back to you if you stay strong and you stay stubborn and you hold on to your faith. We'll continue the story next week, Rezat Hashem. Hope everyone has a great week. And Rezat Hashem, these stories should help us to wake us up from our sleep, to be able to rid us of all evil and to Rezat Hashem be united together with the coming of Mashiach Amen with a lot, a lot of love and a lot of everyone getting along and not having any fights like these guys had. They just, they were crazy. Crazy is a, fighting is a form of craziness. We saw here, they took the dust of the, of the crazy people and they started fighting. Shem should save us. Have a great week.